Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm Will. Um, for those of you who don't know me, hi. I'm a designer here at Planning Center. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about burnout today. But first, I want to share a new tool. I've decided in my talks now, I'm going to always share something like a new tool or something that I found out about. Uh, because if you don't enjoy my talk, at the very least, you've got a new tool and you can walk away with that. So I'm trying to please you guys. But the new tool I've just done, and some of you might have heard about this, is uh, Lottie. Anybody hear about this? Lottie? Any designers? Yeah? No? OK. Well, Lottie's pretty awesome. And it's uh, designed by the design team at Airbnb. And what it does is it's like a library or a wrapper, if you will. And what it does is it takes, um, as a designer, I design a lot in uh, After Effects. So I can create really cool motion graphics. The problem has always been translating those graphics, especially for mobile, into prototypes. And then your developer has to recreate the animation. So what Lottie allows you to do, and Body Movement allows you to do, which you'll find out if you go to the Airbnb site, um, it allows you to take the graphics and the animations you've made and export them into code. And it's pretty freaking awesome. I just did it. And Travis and I, Travis is in the back there. Travis, you want to wave your hand? Yeah. We were like high-fiving and like freaking out. And everybody was like, what's going on? We're like, we got this magnifying glass to turn around. It's so awesome. And it was, it was pretty amazing. So if you want to check it out, uh, I, I recommend it. It's really simple to set up if you're a designer and you design in After Effects, go for it. And if you know a designer and they're good at After Effects, tell them to use that, because it's going like, to cut down on developer time and time is money. Right. <clears throat> All right, back to the talk. So you've got your, you've got your design tool for me. <laughs> Avoid the burnout. This took me a little bit to figure out how to talk about this, um, because I, I didn't really know where to start. So I decided I'd start with me. That's me right there, back in the day, at the Whiskey A Go Go. Um, when I first started as a designer, I was in a band as many designers is sorry one more time how many designers is there any designers here one two three okay so in the high desert it was like being a band or being a gang that's where i'm from so i decided to be in a band and the thing is when you're in a band you need merch you know you got to make your money somehow for your top ramen and your del taco so we were like hey like let's have t-shirts and stuff so i started designing started doing that a lot and i eventually found my way after high school into a print shop just down the street, town print shop, started designing there. And I thought, man, I'm freaking kick ass. All my other friends are like working at fast food and stuff. I'm like, I'm like a designer. And before I knew it, I kind of went in under false pretenses saying I could do things when really I couldn't, you know? <laughs> and before I knew it, you know, there was like a stack of jobs that used to hand me like these manila envelopes and they just used to stack up on my desk. And there was a ton there. And I started to get really angry at the customers. They'd come in, and I was a jerk to them. And my boss was a jerk to me. So it was this really back and forth of just jerkdom. You know, everybody was just like really angry with one another. And so eventually, I was just like, F it. I'm done. I'm leaving. You guys can kick rocks. So I left. And that was the first thing that happened to me. I was just really, like, I, I was super overwhelmed at that job. And I was looking at this huge mountain of work before me. I just got super distracted. And it just weighed me down. And I just cashed in my chips. I was like, that's enough. I'm done. Moving on. Something else will happen. And I was pretty depressed about it. Um, but then I, you know, I tried to look on the brighter side. And I said, you know, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going and keep doing my thing. Went to college and did all my stuff. And then one day in the band, my friend's dad comes and he says, hey, man, you're a designer. I said, yes, I am. He says, well, I've got a software company. And we need a designer to design this UI. And I had never even heard of UI. I was like designing t-shirts and you know logos and stuff like that. I was like, UI, OK, sure. And so again, I went down to the interview. I'll never forget that interview. It was like one of the weirdest interviews. He was just, the guy was sold right away. He didn't even know me. He was like, yeah, man, you're, you're the guy. We, we need you. I was like, OK, you do need me. <laughs> and so I, I said it. And, and it was like, it was like a kind of a cool dream. You know, the guy's like, oh, we're going to give you a brand new Mac. 
got me a brand new Mac with all the stuff. And, you know, I was 19, and I was like, yeah, this is sick, you know, I'm, I'm designing, making websites. I don't even know what a website is, how it works, but I'm doing it. I can tell you now, I have never been more stressed out in my life. Like, that was one of the most stressful periods. And I've, I don't think my wife is here yet, but she's going to come and support me at some point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she confirmed like, tw like at least four times today. What time does your talk start? I was like, 7 o'clock. <laughs> she, she'll be here. She'll be here. Is she, is she here? She just got here? Okay. Hey! Where is she? Hey, yeah, there she is. <laughs> um, so I, she remembers, we were, we were out to dinner one night, and she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I, I, I'm, I think I'm going to have a heart attack because I am super stressed out. I don't know how to build a website. I'm Googling and tutorials and design tuts. Do you guys remember that? Anybody remember design tuts? I was on that all day, every day, while working on this site, and I was freaking out. As soon as I got the map book, and as soon as I got my first paycheck, guess what that boss did? He was like, where's my site? Like, what are you doing? Are you dicking around? Like, give me my site. He was pissed. I was getting calls, like, all the time. Finally, you know, I did build a site. Pretty good. And it wasn't, it wasn't good at all, you know, but uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Buddy. Reagan's my friend, and he helps me with these things. Thank you so much. Whenever you need a microphone, I'm there. Buddy. There you go. I'm sure this wraps around. Okay. Thanks. Now I'll hug your ear and you should be good. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. And so basically, they, uh, he, he, I, I just went down. I decided, you know what? This guy is really upset. I went down and I said, dude, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Again. Super stressed, super overwhelmed. Went under false pretenses. I wasn't honest with who I was as a person and my job. I was done. I went in and I said, here you go, man. And that was really hard, because it was a good paying job, had benefits, you know, all these securities that I had, and I was a young age, everybody's super proud of me, go Will. My parents were just like, oh man, why'd you quit? I was like, well, I couldn't do it. It was, it was hard. And my dad was like, no. This Portuguese, this Latin, said some cuss words, and I was like, and so, and so I, I said, okay, forget it. I'm just going to keep going. And my dad actually pointed me in this direction. He says, he says why don't you freelance? And I said, okay, I'll freelance. And, and I found this site, 99designs. Bad site. Don't use it, okay? <laughs> don't use it. But 99designs, I was on there. I was on there for like a number of years. I won somewhere in the vicinity of 25 contests. The way it works is like you're a designer amongst other designers. You're pitching your work for free, and you get a prize at the end if you win, right? from clients. So I was doing that for a number of years, and it was going really well, excuse me, this is a beer. Um, and basically, I found this connection with this guy on there. He's like, I, I have a site, I have a job, I have a company, I need a logo. One is project, I did somewhere like 30 logos for him. And he was on the Dragon's Den, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, this guy's like kind of famous. Like, yeah, me too, right, me too? And he was like, yeah, yeah, you can come with me. And that's what I felt like. I felt like I was being embraced by him a little bit. So basically what happened was I developed this relationship with him. I eventually got out, you know, and I got this really cool, kind of good job at this place called Planning Center. And, <laughs> and so basically what happened was I, uh, I, I started working here, and I was like, man, I'm wrapping up all my jobs. This guy kept emailing me for requests. So... I'm going to share something with you. Don't judge me, okay? Don't, don't judge me. I was na young and naive, still learning my process. Okay? He kept emailing me, and he says, hey, man, you know, I, I, I got this logo, and I need this logo, but it's like a formula run, but I need an F3, and I need you to do this for me. Like, can you, can you do this for me? Are you interested? So what did I do? I said, yeah, and I gave him a really, really cheap price. It was really cheap. You ready for this price? Okay. I said, 350 for the one logo and 150 for the other. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Okay? It's really young, learning my ways. And then he said, I'm okay with the 350, but I'm not okay with the 150. It seems like that's steep. I know what I want. I want the F1 logo to be an F3, buddy. Give me that. 
what can you do for me? And because I don't know how to haggle and I don't know how to negotiate and I was young and, you know, ridiculous at the time, I said, oh, $80, that's fine, like, give me $80. <laughs> I, I remember having a conversation with this with Jeff and Jeff was like, what? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it was really bad. Um, but basically, I, I said, hey, is, you know, is that cool? How, how, are you cool with 80 bucks? And he's like, yeah, of course. Of course he's cool with $80. <laughs> so there we go. I said, okay, here's some, here's some ideas, buddy. And he, he really liked the one on the bottom in the middle uh, left. You know, he says, like, oh, yeah, I like that. But then, of course, like with every job, every Client, there's, you know, stuff that he wants to adjust. Now, let's read this, right? I like the simpler ones. My favorite is the top right, left, middle, bottom. I don't need Formula One written. However, I'm attaching a logo, okay? Maybe you can incorporate it into the design for colors. I don't know if I told you about this project, but I'm building another vehicle for the Crown Prince of Dubai. His name is Faza. His favorite number is three, hence the name F3 for the vehicle. The logo is his personal emblem, thanks. This was my reaction <laughs> to that. The Crown Prince of Dubai is worth $13.9 billion. I wasn't upset at all. I wasn't really upset. I was very, I was very nice about it. And in fact, I, I, I was calm, and I thought, that's a fair thing he did to me, you know. Um, the Crown Prince of Dubai, sure, you know. I, I didn't have any... Judgments. I didn't wish him dead. I was very, very honored. Of course I was honored to be working on the Crown Prince of Dubai's stuff, but... <laughs> <clears throat> that was the logo that he sent me, as the logo of the Faza, the Crown Prince of Dubai. Now, I didn't know that, but, you know, I thought, man, you know, that sucks, like... 80 bucks? Like, really? You haggled with me over a 150? So what did I do? Of course I did it, because I'm a sucker. I was a sucker. Um, and, you know, I don't know what happened with this. We kind of just let things be. I, I kind of emailed him a nice email. It was very nicely worded. And I said, you know, I can't do this for that much money. I'm sorry. I'm backing out of this. And I once again felt the burden of all this work I wasn't feeling good because I didn't know my value as, as a designer. And, uh, you know, you think that's funny. What really makes me laugh is that the fact that this guy is walking around $13.9 billion, he's got an $80 logo probably on his, on his car. Um, no disrespect to him, but dude, he, he probably doesn't know that, right? The middleman, like, fooled him. It's like, he probably would be, he would probably take offense to that. He'd be like, I want my logo design right. So I started to think, I started to ask myself what was happening, you know? And that was shortly around the time that I got the job here. And I really didn't know who I was until I got my job here. And I'm not trying to plug Planning Center, I'm just, just talking about how I kind of started to discover myself as a designer. Um, so I started to make a list of the things that I knew was going wrong. One, I, I, grew, I was growing up in a generation that was, everything was instant, okay? You know, instant this, instant that, instant fame, instant glory, blah, 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 instant money. I was looking at the, the journey, you know? I was looking at the mountain instead of taking one step in front of the other, right? We have a tendency to do that in society. We see the final thing and we get overwhelmed really easily instead of just taking one step. I was way too eager to please, and that's something I still struggle with. I still have to check myself and be like, not so agreeable. And I think that's something that is because it's a fear, right? I mean, you like have this fear of if I don't agree to this, they're gonna get mad at me or you know what? Um, and the before with all those jobs that I had before, all these clients, I, I I didn't have good leadership. I didn't have someone I could go to to talk for guidance. Really, I mean, I had my folks, but they were doing their own thing. You know, I wasn't. I was, you know still figuring, my, figuring things out. They were still figuring things out. And m the number one thing was I didn't feel valued in anything I did. I mean, 150 bucks for a logo, right? Would that make you feel valued? No. I mean, it's my own fault, but I, I, that's how I learned. So because I had the negatives, I could start thinking about solutions, and I could start thinking about ways to fix it. So 
I, I started very, very basic. I started talking to, seeking guidance, seeking guidance from books, seeing guidance from uh, Shane Armitage, which he's here. Um, he's someone that I, I really look up to as a design, he's our lead designer here. And uh, there's a scene in Saving Private Ryan where Tom Hanks and uh, I think it's Private Rybin, I think that's his name, Rybin's like, what, what about it, you don't gripe at all? And Tom Hanks is like, yeah, I gripe, I gripe up. You know, I don't gripe to you, I gripe up. I feel like Shane and I kind of have that relationship. Like, I gripe to him, if he thinks it's really, you know, like if it's something that, you know, really needs attention, he'll, you know, talk, talk to the higher ups. But like, Shane's really good at just listening, and, and great leaders are great at listening. Jeff uh, was, is someone else that, you know, listened to me. Like, I've never had a boss take me aside and be like, are you okay? Like, what do you need? That was really crazy to me to experience that. Because most of the time in companies, and if you're a leader here or you're a manager, I encourage you to listen to people, even if they're whinging and moaning a little bit, just because like, it helps. It helped me a lot. And it helped me develop as my character and my skill set. So communicate. And if it's not a boss or someone you can go to, find. Other people, like, like meetups like this, this is good. Talk to people. Don't go in your silo. Don't hang out with the people you come with. Go and like, say, hey, man, how you doing? You want to get a beer? There's a keg right there. If you're not getting a beer and having fun, you know, we don't know all the stuff. Talk to each other. It's good. So communicate. I started communicating. But from that, I, I couldn't just talk all the time. I had to initiate, right? I had to ignite the change. So what I started to do was do little things, you know? I started to change myself, work on new things. If I was feeling burnt out on a project that I was working on for months at a time, years at a time, I'd do something else, you know? Just a little thing. Move around a bit, go and work on a new language. We were talking about Tony and I were talking about earlier. He started learning a new language, and that just like got him excited, ready to go. I'm ready to go on something else now. Kieran, same thing, we were talking about new design programs, new tools. That's good. And you might say, well, where do I find the time? You have to make the time. A lot of people always say that, but it's very true. There's a reason a lot of people say that. So you have to take the steps. You can't just talk, because if you talk, you know, that's all, that's all you're doing is talking. Once you talk, you outline it, go, make the change, ignite it. And then I started to, when I say take a break, I'm not saying, saying like I went on vacations and everything. Well, vacations are good. But I, I started to take a break from my work mentally. You know, I started to, uh, because what can happen is you get so focused and you eventually are just, it feels like you're banging at your head against the wall and you feel overwhelmed. That stack of papers just piling up in your mind, you know? Um, especially as creatives, as design teams, we need that, C creative people need that outlet. They need some sort of outlet to just get away from it all and have that release of energy, you know? And one thing that I found was really helpful was uh, giving a little bit of my time. And it doesn't have to be in design, but it could be like volunteer work or something like that. It gives you like this high because you're doing something for somebody else and when you see their face, you're like, holy crap. And then they're inspired to go do something for someone else. And then they're inspired. It's very good. This is like a good ripple effect. And so I, I did this, uh, T-shirt for this kid. If you go to anybody, go to Mama Cat's breakfast. <gasps> yeah, man, they're so good. If you don't go, go. That's good, man. But they uh, do this thing where they have this uh, call-ahead system where you can pay, and the donations when you pay for it, you can reserve a table, right? The donate all the all the money that they get for that, they give to a charity, and they're doing this charity for this kid named Benjamin. So I said, hey, man, like, you want some graphics? I don't know if they used them, but. I developed this relationship with me and the owner now, and now we have this relationship. It's like, hey, Will, like, yeah, you got a table, buddy. Like, get in here. Like, come on. Like, I'm treated like family over there. It's really crazy. But I, I didn't do it for that. I did it because I was just like, this, this kid has cancer, right? Like, I want to help him. I want to give a little bit of my time. And, and that made me feel good. And then I wanted to work on other things. I was excited to come and work because I was like, I want to tell you about this, and I want to keep going and doing more design and keep keep going. I was excited. Energize me. And then there was something else I started to do, was, which is recently, 
I started to get more physical, like, and move around, so I started doing jujitsu. Don't try and fight me after this, because I suck. <laughs> um, but I started doing jujitsu um, at uh, San Diego Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy. It's a little plug for them, Paulo, if you're watching. Uh, and he, he's a good leader. I, I've, again, you know, um, he said something yesterday, actually, that was really, it stayed with me. Uh, so far, I don't know about. <laughs> um, gosh. Let me take a drink. He said something that I thought was really important, though. He said, um, "In jujitsu, you do not lose; you learn. You never lose in jujitsu. There's no such thing. You win, but most of the time you're learning." And I talked to a couple of the black belts afterwards, like, and he says, "I said, hey, thanks for showing me, you know." going easy on me, and they said, hey, man, you're teaching me, you know? And I think that's really important, is to be patient with our coworkers. Sometimes we can get into this mode of like, oh, man, you didn't give me that thing when I needed it, and now I'm like stressed and everything. It's like, you know what? Talk to each other maybe a little more and listen to each other. Maybe that person's going through something. You want to listen to them, get their feedback, you know, and motivate them, because when you, when, when you feel motivated and they feel motivated, then things start to take off. Like today with me and Travis, dude, that was so cool. Like we were, we were so stoked because we were talking to each other and that's like what we need. Get off the phone and get off the screens a little bit and talk with one another. That's very important. It's, it's, it's not going to slow down productivity, I promise. People will get more excited. So be patient with one another. And then finally, in closing, I encourage you to keep searching for new ways of, of combating burnout. I encourage you to to keep trying new methods, because I'm still doing that. And I'm still learning about myself. And I hope that you took something away from that. But I, I, one thing is, you got to keep discovering. You know, I think life is, is, a, is an epic journey, right? And, and we, we work, like, I work eight hours a day, right? If you think about how much time you spend around your work colleagues versus your family, you're around your work colleagues more than your family, right? You, you want to enjoy this ride. Um, and if, I, I've been here for five years. This is my sixth year coming up. That's pretty crazy for a young designer. I've been looking at the statistics, and like, you know, Google's like, they just drop like flies, like the designers, and they're just burned out. They go home, 10,000 bucks saved. You know, they're making a lot of money up there, but they're burned out because they've been slicing images all day, and they've been doing these like fixed ways of doing things. It's, it's, very, it's very challenging for a young designer today. But I'm still discovering, and you need to discover too. Get yourself out. Listen if you're a leader. Please do. Please listen. And uh, I thank you all for listening to me right now. And have a great rest of your night, and enjoy the rest of the talks.